we do have Photoshop on iPad. I want to do some things that I can do in Photoshop that either I can't do in Lightroom or be harder to do in Lightroom. I want to hit this share button and you notice there's an edit in Photoshop choice that you'll only see on iPad today. Edit in Photoshop, it will down, in this case, since the original wasn't downloaded, then it will fire up Photoshop on my iPad and it will start opening that image in Photoshop on iPad. And there it is. I can actually create layers. I can add text. I can add adjustment layers. I can certainly use the healing brush. I can use background removal. I can make uh, subject selections and let's do a composite. Add a different background to this photo and I want to add text to it. Let's do the background removal first. So I'm going to tap on the lasso and the lasso will give me all these various selection tools including object selection. There's a remove background too. And all it's going to do is a simple mask. It's going to do a select subject and it's going to mask out everything that's not that it doesn't think is the subject. So there it is. Now add a photo beneath the text icon is the go look at and go grab more files. Since I know the card reader is still there, I'm going to tap files. And I'm going to go browse. I'm going to go to my card reader. So if I tap on one of these to open up, it opens it up in camera raw because camera raw is built into Photoshop on iPad. Even as I'm opening up a raw file, it just doesn't open it. It lets me do all the camera raw stuff I was going to do. Does the Apple Pencil work well on Photoshop on the iPad? Absolutely. We're going to be using that. I'm going to choose Auto Effects. Go back to Light. And bump up the exposure just a little bit more. Once I'm done of making the adjustments to the raw file and I hit Done, it brings in that raw file as a layer inside of Photoshop. And I can still tweak it more. So if it needed to be scaled, I can scale it. It brings me into Free Transform. And it's, it just filled up the frame, so I'm good. That's what I want it. But if I need to scale it down or do anything more to it, I could. Tap done. And now you can see it's in the layers panel, it's on a layer above her. So we're just going to simply use the Apple Pencil and drag that layer up. Puts her up above it. I'm going to go to the move tool. Since I'm on her layer, I'm just going to move her over from a composition standpoint. We can also make some adjustments to her. Clipping adjustment. It adds an adjustment layer, but it clips it to the layer you're on automatically so you don't have to do the two-step process. If I do a color balance on her, now it's clipped to just her and I can maybe make her a little bluer, kind of match some of that that she's already on to kind of balance her out so she's not so flesh tony <laughs> compared to that blue hour photo. I can go back to her layer, add another clipped adjustment. Uh, let's do levels. So I'm using a levels adjustment on her, kind of bring down her levels a little bit. Just kind of make her a little bit more contrast. Add text. I just tap the text tool. Tap anywhere I want the text to be. There we go. Go into the color. Tap my eyedropper. Go grab the color of her blouse. Go back to text layer and I can say whatever font I want. Ooh, select it first. There we go. Get a nice script. Who doesn't like a nice script? I can export it right from Photoshop. I can save it for whatever format I want, but there's a send to Lightroom that will write out a PSD with all the layers and it will send it back to the same album that you had open and you got this image from in Lightroom. So to put it right next to the original, just like it does in Photoshop. So it says receiving the original now and there it is. We can see it. So I can say open it and it opens it in Lightroom. See you later, everybody.